weighs in. So it's going to get a little bit more complicated. I'm going to try and make that a little more user friendly. <clears throat> a moral agent who has an, op an option of performing X or not performing X and choosing to perform X obviously is acting free. When you only have the option because of a moral imperative to perform an action X, then you, your act of performing X in the face of this obligation is not free. You had no alternative. So the only way to preserve your freedom then is to preserve the option of not performing X. Uh, you know, <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. Here's what he says. Nietzsche says, so that man may respect himself, he must be capable of doing evil. And, you know, Nietzsche says some loaded stuff in his text. And unfortunately, Nietzsche has been blamed. And one of the main reasons that I, to be honest with you, there's a lot of reasons, but one of the main reasons that I wanted to do World of Power, um, I mean, scholars of Nietzsche know this is one of if not the most dense text, one of the most dense texts because it's disjointed in its nature. And also to really have an understanding of the text, you really need to understand more of Nietzsche's sort of worldview from all the different things that he's written. So it's a def it's a, there's no denying that Walter Plower is a phenomenally complex text. But more important than that, it was, it was this book along with all of Nietzsche's thought that everyone, for the vast majority, generalizing Nietzsche, as a socialist, national socialist, which we've disproven to some extent, um, you know, as justifying the extermination of the Jewish population. We talked about sacrifice and how sacrifice is, is important, and people thought it was biological sacrifice, and I pointed to the sections where he says specifically that's not what he's talking about. But also this, this, this quote, this idea that, so that man may respect himself, he must be capable of doing evil. If you are reading Nietzsche in pass and loosely reading him and sort of you flip to a random page and you find this and you take it out of context it sounds like a horrific quote it sounds like he's it sounds like he's promoting the most vile acts that's that and I hate when scholars and scholars and graduate students do this they don't read the whole text they read a section they flip to the index they find a key term they go to the page they cite it and they have no context of the greater the greater work. You put an evil, you look at evil, you go to the page, you see, so that man may respect himself, he must be capable of doing evil. Oh, he's pro-evil. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying is, if there is an institution in place, and obviously the institution of morality is affirming the good, which we know is really not good, but they're affirming the good, and the good is represented by X. If you only have the option of doing X, and you thus do X, you are not free. In religion, there is no, and this is, this is specifically how you justify what I think is the, the nail, right? There is specifically in a dogmatic ideological system of beliefs, be it religion or not, there is no appeal to external outside authorities. It's all self-referential dogmatic. Not only is it self-referential and dogmatic, Prescriptions are being made that you have to do action conforming to those tenets. That action is X. If you do that action, you are not free because you don't have an option of doing the quote-unquote immoral act. So if we're talking about morality then, this is moral, and this would be immoral. And what Nietzsche says by, what he means by, so that man may respect himself, he must be capable of doing evil, isn't that man has to go out there and do the whole, you know, genocide and all. That's not what he's saying. He's saying in order for man to respect the fact that he is a free, autonomous agent in the world, capable of exercising his own volition, he must be able to, in opposition to dogmatic institutions, in opposition to dogmatic ideological prescriptions, be able to act to the contrary. That's what he's saying. To be technical, that's exactly what he's saying, right? Anything else is a to there's a total misunderstanding of Nietzsche, and far too often, and I'm not going to put names out there, but far too often I've read secondary scholars' accounts of Nietzsche, or even student papers um, and accounts of Nietzsche, where 
there's just a failure to recognize this point, and it's an absolutely essential point, right? The point is, you are only free if you, of your own volition, have been presented with alternatives, right? And the whole point of a dogmatic institution is not to present you with alternatives. Or, if you're presented with alternatives, the alternatives are given by the institution so that you can choose A or B, but both have been implemented by the institution. Exercising your choice in choosing A or B isn't an act of freedom. I've done a really ghetto version of this in a video called Popcorn Flavored Ice Cream. Go to my main YouTube channel, type in Popcorn Flavored Ice Cream and watch the video on it. But it was all Nietzsche inspired, right? That video, it's not even Nietzsche inspired. It's basically just cut and paste Nietzsche with a crazy example, right? Genius, genius stuff. Freedom isn't freedom if you act in conformity to prescribed moral behavior prescribe moral action. You have to be able to think for yourself. You have to be able to act contrary to the prescription. Right? He's not he's not saying, you know, man can't respect himself unless he kills people. He's not saying that. He's saying man can't respect himself unless he has the possibility of acting in opposition to the moral prescription. That's freedom. That's freedom, right? That's what freedom looks like. That's what it looks like. You know? Um, it's not always going to be, you know, Skip the malu, right? Freedom is recognizing the abuses of of power and acting in opposition to those abuses in the many infinite forms that that takes, right? So, uh, very, very, very important, very important, right? Very important. So, right beneath the image, then, which is important, note two eighty nine. This continues uh, onto the next page. All perfect acts. All perfect acts are unconscious and are no longer subject to will. I have some 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 side comments that I want to make with respect to this note, but here's why it's important. All perfect acts are unconscious and no longer subject to will. Consciousness is the expression of an imperfect and often morbid state of a person. A few videos back, I made a confusion between Consciousness and conscience, right? And I sort of conflated it. And I, I, and I shouldn't have made that conflation between consciousness and conscience. Because they're obviously two different things, right? Consciousness is sort of cognitive recognition of my individuation. Um, conscience is knowing right or wrong, right? So when I talk about conscience, I know right or wrong. When I talk about consciousness, it's a recognition sort of of the self, generally speaking. But the funny thing is, and the reason why I conflated it a bit, was, was because Nietzsche's pretty gray in this area, right? There, I'm not saying that he equivocates, he's too smart to do that, but there is a conflation. If you look at this, all perfect actions are unconscious, and no longer subject to will. Consciousness, he doesn't say conscience, he says consciousness, right? My recognition of myself is the expression of an imperfect and often morbid state of a person. This is why I sort of mixed it up before, because Nietzsche, he does, uh, it's, it's a genius move, what he does here. You would think he should say conscious, conscience. Right? He doesn't say conscience, right? He says consciousness, right? Consciousness is the expression of an imperfect and often morbid state of a person. Personal perfection as conditioned by will, as consciousness, as reasoning with dialectic is a caricature, a kind of self-contradiction. A degree of consciousness makes perfection impossible, right? And um, this part I'm not as strong in, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not as strong in the sort of the, the um, psychoanalytic, psychological implications of this. I know a little bit, but I'm fish out of water on this material. I do love reading it, though. It's, it's, it's the stuff that I read in my leisure. Tons of Zizek, Lacan. Lacan to a less extent, but Zizek. Lacan via Zizek. Uh, but this is, this is the stuff that I, that I enjoy consuming. It's dialectic sort of discourse in this specific area. right? The idea that insofar as I make actions in the world, my actions in the world, as informed by my consciousness, not conscience, my consciousness, my awareness of self, is already imperfect because behind the scenes there is an unconscious driver, 
unconscious motivator of varying degrees and in 